Hey guys, 4080 here, and this is going to be part one of building a panel. So the first thing that I did was uh, just draw a really rough sketch of what I wanted the front interface to look like, so that I know, you know, how I'd want to design the Arduino to be. I was limited by the number of pins on the Arduino, so I used a seven segment display to show a lot of information. So I used it to show what zone has been activated, if there's an alarm indication, and I also used the seven segment display to just um, show what coding option you have selected. So I just scrolling through like it'll go from, you know, one to five and each number is a different coding option. And I'll have like a guide to go with that that I'll like put on the panel for, I guess, if somebody else needs to use it. So once I knew what I, the final design of the front interface was going to look like, or at least like a basic idea of what I wanted it to look like, it helped me, you know, more easily uh, design my circuits. So like, you know, how many buttons I need, how many LEDs I need and stuff like that. So this project has over 618 lines of written code. So that's like, you know, what code you think the code would look like. But I kind of cheated while doing this. I use block coding, which is like scratch, which I was pretty familiar with already. Okay, so this is uh, basically the part where I'm going to be explaining everything I did. So, you know, what the need for that entire, you know, 618 lines of code is. I think this is one of the most complicated Arduino-based panels that I, I mean, at least I've heard of. So this panel uh, has three zones. It can have more zones if the Arduino just has, you know, more points to plug into. So basically this is just, you know, system normal page. So what we got is, you know, just a green LED, which symbolizes AC power. And basically this will always be on if the Arduino is on. This is the options LED. So this LED is on, that means you're in the options menu. And if both these LEDs are on at the same time, that means you're in the option menu too. So if I go to option menu, you can see we're on one LED and then option menu two is two LEDs. So as you can see, when I go into the menus, the seven segment display displays a one right now. And that's because uh, the default selections are one. So if I up this, this is coding, three is set to march time. And then this is whether you want the NAC or the strobe to put out a sync protocol. It's just a basic one. It'll just flick off for a split second. So this is the strobe LED and this is the horn LED. Now basically in the real thing when I build it, these are going to be relays which are going to be connected to 24 volt. Basically my system right now would just be like that. So if I add another pull station, but it's controlled by the Arduino so it can turn stuff on and off. So now I'm going to simulate as if a pull station was activated. That's what the buttons are. They're just basically pull stations. All they do is short out these two leads down here and cause the Arduino to detect that. So I'll be able to put terminal blocks here and then have my pull stations be these buttons. These are normally open buttons. So right now I have the horn coding set to march time and the strobe coding just to no, no sync protocol. So this is going to be on solid and this is going to be doing march time. I might look a bit slower because the simulation doesn't run at exactly real time because it's kind of hard. So if I do zone one, I'm going to hold that down. I forgot to mention it has a built in false alarm prevention. The station has to be activated for two seconds in order for the alarm to be detected. So if it just like, you know, clicked at once, nothing happened. So as you can see, the uh, horn circuit is doing march time and the strobe circuit is just steady. And also the seven segment display is displaying the zone number. I activated zone one, so zone one is being displayed. So if I hit the silence button, which is this button, it's the same button they use to switch through different, uh, menu, different things in the menus. So I have it wired to do audible silence. 
And now that I think about it, I could add some more things to make it so that's toggleable and do audible silence or not. But right now, it's just on audible silence. So when you silence it, the horn shuts off, the strobes stay on. And if this was synced, it would still be doing the sync protocol. As you can see, the silence LED is also on. So if I hit reset, uh, it does what a normal panel does. Every single thing gets turned on, like all the segments on the seven segment display and all the LEDs are gone. Now, some of the other options I wired for my personal use is if I go to coding option six, this is test mode. So this will make it if the alarm goes off, the horns will not sound at all, just the strobes will turn on. And I coded this to do a system trouble, which is shown as a P for problem, because I can't do T with a seven segment display. So yeah, I'll probably also put that somewhere like P equals problem or something like that. But I can look right at the thing and see, oh, there's a problem and it's silence, or I can, you know, figure out what the problem is. I have, yeah. So if I activate the alarm again, we get just the strobe circuit turning on. It also turns the key off and puts the three on because I activated zone three. So if I reset again, it goes back to P. Also, you don't have to hit silence before you reset. It doesn't matter if you hit silence or not. So another thing I also added was the ability to do walk tests, which I programmed to be coding 7. So it's also going to do a P, because walk test isn't a proper alarm mode, so there's going to be a trouble. So now if I activate any of these pole stations, basically, it's going to trip its straight new alarm. And I also coded the horn to code... So basically it's going to, you know, either one, two or three beats and then wait two seconds. So if I do zone one, as you can see, it pulses once and then it waits two seconds and then it'll pulse again. So this is an audible notation of what zones activated on the walk test. And then we also have a seven segment display displaying it. So then if I, so I let go of the pulse station, so this would be as if I reset it everything just normals again and we have the trouble indicator and there's no more alarm also the strobes are off so then if you do two we get a two on the display and then also you can see the horn is pulsing two every two seconds and then same with three it'll pulse three times if you made it this far thank you so much for sticking with me i know this video is probably kind of boring but i wanted to be very detailed with how this works because I know there's probably a couple people that are interested in that. So I don't know when I'll get the parts to build this but when I do there will be a part two which will be actually constructing this and installing it on my system. So thanks for watching.